Hello and welcome to this video and today we're going to be talking about this. This is the Smartycam 3 Sport from AIM. It's the first in the new generation of Smartycam, so they're going to be released over the coming months. And today we're going to have a look at this, we're going to have a look at the video quality, we're going to have a look at side by side with the existing Smartycam, and we're also going to talk about some of the core features and benefits of this updated version. And so uh, without further ado, let's get into it. Now I was able to get my hands on one of these about three, four weeks ago from uh, my friends at AIM and AIM Technologies here in the UK. Now I think it's fair to say at this point that AIM did send this to me to be able to work with and to have a look at, give some feedback and understand how to use it. And while they haven't asked me to do this video, I think I want to be very honest up front that they did send me this camera to be able to work with. I will do the best job I can in terms of being able to give a fair and impartial uh, overview of the particular camera itself, but I just want to make sure that's called out at the very beginning. To be able to give that comparison, I'm comparing it against an existing AIM product as well, which is the Smartycam 2.1 uh, HD and you can see from this picture that's right behind me you can see both this camera uh, that is installed on the actual car and just above it you can see the little bullet camera there as well it just gives me the ability to be able to run them side by side so you can see both these units running together now before we get into some of the improvements of the camera itself it's worth just having a look at the device itself and so if I show it up to the camera while it takes a little bit of time to focus this is the Smartycam 3 uh, Sport. You can see that it's a nice little design on the back. Uh, there is a lovely screen where you can set up. This is where you plug it into your data hub so you can get your information fed straight into the device. Here are your control buttons. Uh, on the bottom you have a camera mount. I'll show you that in just a minute. And then uh, you also have this lovely sturdy door on the side that actually takes a bit of work to get it open but when you do Inside is where you put your uh, micro SD card, we'll talk about that in just a second, uh, where you actually uh, put the data in. Now it's quite a sturdy door, which makes me feel really good uh, that uh, no water is going to get in to mess with the electronics. Similarly, to be able to give you an idea of comparison and size, here are the two devices side by side if I compare it against a GoPro. So right now it's focusing on my eye, there we go, it's focused on the cameras, and you can see in terms of size, it is a little bit bigger, but once you get this into its waterproof casing, there's not too much different between the two itself. Now, the final thing I wanted to be able to mention in that particular scenario is when we talk about mounting. Now, there's loads of ways to be able to mount the camera. This is just a regular camera mount type of scenario. And what I did is that I had a mount already established on the car for a GoPro. So I actually set it up with a GoPro mount and you can just get these little adapters. I got mine on Amazon for a few pounds and you can just uh, screw the device on here. And there's your... Uh, mount that you can put it on just like you would put on a GoPro. But there's many ways, there's RAM mounts and you can get them all as you work through uh, thinking about being able to buy one of these particular cameras. And especially if you've already got a camera set up, uh, you may have already the parts yourself. So that's the device itself. It's really nice. Um, this one's an 84 degree uh, lens, which is great for a wider angle view. The 67 is nice uh, if you're in more of a sort of enclosed type of environment. So uh, well worth talking to uh, your AIM folks if you are thinking about getting one of these as to the right size of lens you want to be able to look at. Now, some of the improvements uh, that have come from this device um, are uh, based upon quality of video. Um, and so one of the things, and I'll put a little video up on screen while I'm chatting right now, is you can see the difference between the new Smartycam 3 Sport, which is 1080p, uh, so full HD, versus the 720p of the previous version. Uh, now that's not only an improvement in terms of the video quality, but one of the things you'll also see is the graphics also uh, have higher um, uh, definition as well, which I think is a nice uh, enhanced feature uh, going forward. In addition to that, the other thing you're probably noticing as we play these videos out is that the vibration um, uh, aspect has been controlled better with the new sensors uh, and shutters on the new cameras. This is the first of a series that will be released, I believe, over the coming months and years as AIM rolls out their new camera hardware. Uh, in addition to that, there's other things that I really like about this camera as well. One of the key components is the size of memory you can put into it. I earlier showed you it's now a micro SD card that you can put in there, but whereas the previous version, we recommended that you use maybe a 64 gigabyte card. Don't go any bigger than that because it might not record as well as you want it to. Now you can go up to two terabytes. So there's never gonna be any worry about the ability to be able to record long races, um, like a, a 25 hour race I did just recently. It would have been lovely. Our Smarty Cam with a 64 gig card ran out at about 11, 12 hours. And so this would allow us to be able 
able to record the whole race and probably another race as well if we had the full two terabytes uh, that were in there. Also important to note that if you're using one of these, your file size is going to be slightly larger. So for those of you who are downloading the data onto your PC, just bear that in mind as you look to manage your data as you go forward. It's not much, much bigger, but it is a greater level of resolution and therefore the file size is slightly larger. So that's one of the sort of the key aspects and then the memory as well. Other things that have improved uh, on the camera as well, which I really like, are the overlays and the graphics. There's new, they look more modern than the old versions uh, that you had. Um, and in addition, it's the channels you can overlay on top as well. So there's a few things here uh, which are really, really nice in terms of you can bring in what we call uh, lap channels. Uh, and so when I say we call, oftentimes that's the dialogue we have uh, within folks who work with AIM. What you probably recognize them as is if I've got a dash or a logger, I've got this predictive time that's showing up. So as I go around a corner better than I have done ever before, I watch the predictive timer start to go down. I'm like, wow, I really did a great job through that corner. I break a little bit later or I mess up a corner and similarly the time delta disappears. That is now available as a feed that you can put on top of the video. So as you're looking at it from an analysis point of view later on, you can actually see where you're gaining and losing time as you're going forward. And so many, many advantages of this. I think the final thing um, that we mentioned on this is the, uh, the sort of the sturdiness of the device itself. And I did mention that AIM had sent me this one, but when we were chatting to them, they said, do you want a brand new one or do you want to be able to work with a camera that uh, you know we've used as a demo? And in many respects, um, I uh, didn't mind. I said, look, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very happy to do anything that you were able to send me. So they sent me this one that you can see. If I show you again, just to make sure it focuses on the device itself, it's got a few scratches and scuffs on it. Now, the reason being is that this camera, wait for it to focus back on me, there we are. This camera um, has uh, had a few knocks. It's been involved, I believe, from the uh, information that was told to me, a uh, carting incident where one cart went over another, knocked this off, it rolled around a little bit. So I wanted to see how good the filming was after it's taken a bit of a knock. And I have to say that the uh, ruggedness of these devices is absolutely fantastic. So there's a lot of good that's here. Right, so it's important to note that there are a few things on this camera that I either didn't like or require quite a steep learning curve to be able to make sure that you're using it as effectively as you can. Now the first and most important one, and so there is going to be a second tutorial, which I encourage you to keep an eye out for, I'll probably follow this one in a week or two, is how to actually set up the camera because it's different to your existing Smarty Cam. Or so I thought, the current Smarty Cams can actually be set up the way that you would set this up, but I've never done it. Typically what I would do is that I would create a configuration, I would plug my Smarty Cam in through a USB cable into the camera itself, and then I would hit the transmit button, I'd transmit the configuration to the device. Same thing with doing a firmware update, same thing with being able to send tracks. This is very much different. What you do here is you take the SD card out of this particular device, you configure the SD card on Race Studio 3 and then you put the SD card back into the device and you update from the actual memory module, oh sorry, big pardon, the SD memory that's in the camera itself. So all of the configuration, everything sits on that card that you put in there. And we'll discuss that more as we go through, but that's a bit of a learning curve. And I have to say, has been some of the most common questions that I've had on the channel since the Smarty Cam 3 Sport came out a month or two ago. Other things uh, which are worth mentioning is that this is not designed to run on the battery. It does have a battery in it. It's designed to give you enough time to be able to do the configuration uh, without necessarily being plugged into a car or an ex external source. That being said, the manual says 20 minutes and from those people who have this, probably 20 seconds is more accurate. You can actually see the battery gauge tick down while you're holding it. It's decharging that quickly. And so it's important to note if you're doing work on configuration everything that uh, you need to make sure it's plugged in and then the other thing as well this will not run like previous versions did on battery power alone it means that you need to have an external source of power which can come from two places it can either come first from your can or connected aim network setup so i have an evo 4s and it will feed in if you're using a smarty cam 2dl or so big button a solo 2dl that feed will work but if you're using it on a cart for example you may need an external power supply so when you're ordering it from aim make sure you talk to them about what particular application you're going to use it for to make sure you've got power in addition 
Don't think that the existing cable from your SmartyCam 2 will work in this. You need a 5-pin in this uh, uh, cable, and so make sure you take your cable with you. I've had a number of people I've read online and comments that I've had, which is, I've set it all up, I've tried to plug it into the cable, and it's the wrong cable size, so make sure you pay attention to that. A few other things. Um, it's a little bit fiddly to get the uh, SD card in and out. It's sort of the trade-off between a nice um, sort of closed in environment where you know it's not going to leak and it's fully waterproof but at the same time it's a little bit uh, difficult to get that in and out of that's probably just uh, me having sort of uh, sort of uh, a difficult time rather than everyone experiencing it um, and more than anything else the only other thing I don't like actually comes from the graphic side of things now I do like the new graphics layout but the feed that's coming in from the smarty cam isn't rendering as nicely as I would like on the actual screen and so oftentimes and you'll see it on screen right now instead of taking your foot off the accelerator brake and it going down to zero it goes down to an unusual in many instances something like a 65,000 percent variable instead of zero throttle so there's a few things that need to be cleaned up but in many respects uh, nothing that's on these devices that can't necessarily be adapted or adjusted by AIM in relation to software or firmware updates over the coming sort of weeks and months and so the most important thing for all of you if you get one of these just send the feedback to AIM. They're always excited to get it. Since I've been chatting to them, there have been two more updates to the SmartyCam Sport 3 just in the last couple of weeks, looking at some of the features. Now, it may have been uh, coincidental that it was things that I experienced, and, but if it was aggregate from a number of people, it's important to send your feedback through as well. Beyond that, it's time to be able to make a decision as to whether this is something that you should actually go out and buy. Because remember, it is still in the UK an £800 investment. Plus, of course, you've got to have the dash that will send the feedback um, through the SmartyCam stream or the data through the SmartyCam stream to get in there. I will caveat at that point that if you do have a GPS module and you can do that with this SmartyCam, you can just have GPS data fed in here so you can actually see things from all the GPS channels like your speed, like your inline acceleration, etc, etc. But at the same time, you won't have that data that's coming in from the dash, engine variables, throttle, brake, etc. So it's important to be able to note uh, that, um, you know, it's quite an investment. So for me, my recommendation is this, and uh, again, make your own decision. This is just a thought or recommendation for me. If you don't have a smarty cam and you're interested in getting one this particular size and shape for either a saloon car or putting it into, let's say, a go-kart, get one of these. Get one of these because it will be developed over time and it will get better and better and better, whereas development on the older ones will slowly I'm sure decrease as any kind of evolution uh, of device and hardware sort of goes. If you have one of the original Smarty Cams but you're running a more modern setup, again get one of these because the resolution is fantastic uh, and uh, will actually improve your experiences. If however you've got a Smarty Cam 2.1 or 2.2 or you're using a Bullet Cam, my recommendation to you is potentially to wait. I don't necessarily think the upgrade that you get from a learning tool, which is what we use Smarty Cams for the most, from this over the previous version is enough necessarily to warrant the investment in the Smarty Cam 3 Sport. However, as new versions get released, the new Smarty Cam with the bullet camera, there's actually one with dual cameras so you can do front and back or you know front and footwell, that may become a very interesting type of proposition as well. So just keep an eye out on the new ones that are coming. But if you don't have a Smarty Cam, if you have an older Smarty Cam, and especially if you're a go-karter, this is particularly useful because it's a great tool for being able to develop your racecraft. With that, I'm going to say thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give it a thumbs up um, if you like it. If you agree or disagree with some of the comments, please write in the box below. I love a good conversation uh, in the chat box. And with that, I'll say thanks so much for watching.